Kelly Co-Pastor Mia, your beautiful queen. Hello, it's your boy Malik. Happy birthday, Co-Pastor Mia. Happy birthday, Co-Pastor Mia. From New Bush Children's Choir. Happy birthday, Co-Pastor Mia from the Divinity Players. We want to wish you a phenomenal and happy birthday. Hello, Rock friends. Welcome to the Rock Children's Service. You know why I love the part of Connect when we sing and dance to worship God? Because this is our chance to show the world how awesome He is. He gives me everything I need. He loves me. He loves you. He listens to us sing. He watches us dance for Him. I can't think of any better reason to give God my full focus and worship Him with everything I am. Get up on your feet and let's connect to God together. I rock the rock, cause God rocks the rock, and if you're rocking with the rock, then you're rocking with us. I rock the rock, cause God rocks the rock, and if you're rocking with the rock, then you're rocking with us. Hey. I rock the rock, cause God rocks the rock, and if you're rocking with the rock, then you're rocking with us. And hello to our new friends, Pastors Martin Ann, Lannies, and Moshe at the Fountain of Praise Rock Children's Church. My name is Olivia Bell. I'm 16 years old and I'm a ballerina at the School of American Ballet. Someone who inspires me is Deborah Austin. She was the first black dancer in the New York City Ballet, and she was the first black ballerina principal dancer in an American ballet company. She inspires me to keep working hard and to keep working towards what I believe in and to believe in myself. Hey, it's time for offering. That's right, Mike. And as we give our tithes and offerings, I wanted to share this question that I just got from Monica. When I give money at church, how does it actually get from us to God? Solid question. It's not like there's some elaborate pulley system or a way we can shoot the money into the sky. Nope. Actually, our offering gets to God right here, in the church, in God's house. That's right. When we give, our leaders know that it's God's money and they are very careful with how they use it. They pray and ask God how to make the wisest choices with it. Before spending anything, they listen to God to find out how He wants them to use it to make a difference in the world. Then the offering you give goes to where God needs it to go. So when we give money at the church, we're not just doing good. 
We're obeying God and we're giving the money straight to Him. Exactly. Thanks for the thoughtful question, Monica. And thanks for giving. Because giving is a great way to make make a a difference difference and put put God God first. Hi, I'm a rock mom and I support the Rock Children's Church with my funds because of the involvement, engagement, and all of the exciting activities they have for our children. Good old Connect Nursery Rhymes. Ooh, this one's my favorite. Luke, be nimble. Luke, don't wait. Mike is violating code 468. (laughs) There's even a picture of me with a flamethrower. Good times, good times, and good rhymes. Ooh, look at this one. Twas the day before Easter, and all through HQ, Mike thought of something that he would like to do. Hmm, this looks interesting. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Mike, and this is the time we learned about grace while talking in rhyme. Okay, everyone, I'm glad that you're here. I've got a new Easter tradition this year. Yeah, what's this about? You said to prepare, so I brought some popcorn. And I did my hair. I think it would be fun for this holiday if we told stories of grace, but in a new way. A musical dream? A special parade? Both great ideas, but games that we've played. But what if instead we told one story each? our own Easter rhymes that inspire and teach. I love this idea. I'm also on board. Let's write some super fresh rhymes for the Lord. Lord? Yeah, what's wrong? Just an uncommon word. It implies adoration. And is sometimes preferred. I believe Jesus died to save everyone. Lord is what I call him for things he has done. I get it. And I'm digging this poetry slam. Let's work up our lyrics. This is my jam. We went straight to work on our new compositions, writing and working in comfy positions. We kept our lines tight and our rhymes nice and cozy and fought to avoid any friends being nosy. The time has arrived to share what we've got. Who wants to go first? Me! Okay, Dot. I hope that you like it. We will. And good luck. I proudly present if it looks like a duck. There's a nice little pond near my house by a tree where two little ducks in the shade like to be. They don't act like other ducks you may have seen. Each one is stubborn and bucks the routine. They like to be lazy in the pond in the shade. Instead of learning how to swim, they proudly disobey. Why would we need to know how to swim? We're doing just fine by just diving in. Someday you'll see ducks, you can't do it yourselves. We We don't don't need need your your rules rules and and don't need need your your help. help. So I gave them their space, but I still stayed alert so that no duck was harmed and no duck was hurt. This one duck, the leader, and this slightly upsets me. She only says vroom like she thinks she's a jet ski. Va va vroom, vroomy vroom. She does great impressions, but refuses to learn all the proper swim lessons. But that does not compare to duck number two, who by some means got his wings on a kazoo. 
From morning to night, he loves to make noise. Kazoo, zoo, zoo, zoo! He's a hummer by choice. They were rooming and humming on that fateful morning. So self-absorbed they cannot hear my warning. A big storm is coming! Get out of the pond! And when the wind blew, they could barely hold on. If they'd learned how to swim, instead of festivities, they'd be prepared for the rain and the morning's activities. But now they were tossed by the rainwater's warning. They prepared for their pride, but not for this pouring. Please, we were wrong. We promise we'll quit it. Someone help. All is lost. We finally admit it. I dove in the water and rescued those birds. I warmed them and dried them and shared a few words. If you look like a duck, you should act like a duck. Maybe it's time to admit you messed up. We're sorry, they said. And now we've got it. From now on, we'll be correctly aquatic. So in that nice little pond by my house in the shade, I watched these two ducks fix mistakes that were made. They won't ever be perfect, but when they do wrong, they know that a savior waits all along. There's a reason I wanted my rhyme to begin. When I think of Easter, I first think of sin. Before Adam and Eve or the Garden of Eden, grace for our sins was not something we needed. But when they chose to sin, we all got sin nature. And we all need a savior to fix this behavior. Just like those ducks, we could try to ignore it or admit we have sins and need to pay for it. Jesus saw this problem and left paradise. He came down to earth and he paid the price. There's a great Easter song. Yeah, hand me that tablet. It's called Jesus Gave It All. Yep, I have it. This is a 66 pitch mixed up into one. The book's about God, who he is and what he's done. It's the Holy Bible, y'all, with God's truth packed out inside. It's a life of Christ to hide in your heart and in your mind. Old Testament's a setup for the big event. When Jesus crashed the scene with a new arrangement. It's history, his story, whose story, God's story. Let us know all the pages that this show gone on. Let us word explode from this video into your life. Have you heard the story of how God so loved the world that He gave to all of us His only Son? Jesus grew. To a man, he healed the sick, he loved the lonely, he gave God's love away to everyone, Jesus gave it all. The people followed him, they'd never seen that kind of love, he loved them all no matter what they've done, but not everyone was happy. Some of them were jealous, so they made plans to kill God's only son. Jesus gave it all. And one night while he was praying, some soldiers came to find him. They took him to their roof, who didn't know just what to do. They asked the people gathered just what they should do with him. The crowds crucify him. Though he did nothing wrong, Jesus gave it all. And the soldiers tried to break him, the crowds they mocked and scorned. They led him up a hill called Calvary, and they nailed him to a cross. Till he asked God to forgive them, they didn't understand that it was all for you and me. Jesus gave it all. Then he took his final breath And the sky grew black as midnight And the earth began to shake And the crowd began to tremble They shook their heads in wonder And the soldiers said, I know that this man was the son of God Jesus gave it all And they took him off the cross They placed him in a tomb they ruled a large round stone in the doorway of the cave 
Some soldiers they stood watching, making sure no one could enter. Jesus' friends were sad and hopeless as they all went home that day. Jesus gave it all. On the morning of the third day, his mother Mary came to see him to make his body ready for the grave where he would lay. But the tomb it was empty. An angel came to tell her he's not here. He's risen. See the stones been rolled away. Jesus gave it all. Jesus gave it all. Jesus gave it all. Jesus was sacrificed to pay for our sins. And if we can admit that, forgiveness begins. But admitting your sins is just the first step. There's more. And I think that I should go next. Okay, Alyssa, please set the scene. My rhyme is called The Cook and the Queen. There once was a queen who was loyal and lean, and a cook with a royal mustache. And every year, to spread birthday cheer, they threw an incredible bash. I'll invite them all to a wonderful ball, said the queen as she planned her event. But down in the cellar was an unhappy feller. The cook was a bit discontent. He steamed and he sweated. He stewed and he fretted. I've seen this whole party before. I bake and I blend, but only to send all my precious treats right out the door. Would it really hurt if they missed one dessert? Would they really miss one little scone? So the night of the dance, the cook took a chance and kept one dessert for his own. Now the queen was upstairs putting on airs, but she stopped everything with a laugh. <laughs> this night has been fun, but hard work was done, and I want to say thanks to my staff. So this is the scene where an invading queen discovered her cook was a thief. She walked in on the guy with a mouthful of pie, and her cheer became disbelief. I'm sorry, he said and wished he was dead. I bit off more than I could chew. I've been caught in the crust and broken your trust, and now you must do what you do. But this is the scene where a good-natured queen didn't punish the cook for the theft. Forget it, she smirked and put down your work. We've still got some partying left. This seemed so rare for someone to care, and it didn't make sense in his head. This cook who expected to be soundly rejected was served up forgiveness instead. Because grace doesn't do what we think it should do when it's given to you and to me. We're all less than saints, but instead of restraints, grace says that we can live free. Grace isn't something that we can achieve. God sent his son so we could believe. Jesus died for us to show us all grace. We should have been punished, but he took our place. We believe in Jesus and the life that he led. We can know in our hearts that he's no longer dead. Because he rose again and death was defeated. He gave us the grace that we so desperately needed. This belief changes lives. I know it changed mine. Just like in Romans chapter 10, verse nine. There's a Bible verse for this? Yep, it's the greatest. But it doesn't quite rhyme, so let's take a hiatus. We'll continue rhyming after we're through. Repeat after me. We're following you. Romans 10, 9. Romans 10, 9. Say with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Say with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Then you will be saved. Then you will be saved. When we believe in our hearts that God sent his son to repair the relationship we had undone, we can be saved. And the friendship's restored. When we say with our mouth, Jesus is Lord. It's my turn. A nice grand finale. Mine is called Instant Friend. Let's begin, shall we? So, 
There was a dude named Buster who lived life on his own. Secretly he wanted friends, but he did things all alone. My commentary solitary from an ordinary monastery. I'm a number one son, everyone else is secondary. Dinners were always so low, partners were a no-go. Till a knock knock on his door made this lonely man say, Whoa, no, solicitors, knock knock, please go away. Knock 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 till he says, Okay. Standing on his doorstep was a human imitation, a supersonic, bionic, mechanical automation. What you got, robot? Can't you see I'm busy? You can go away now. He isn't leaving, is he? He looked the robot over. There must be strings attached. But instead, he found a card and a button on the back. He read this friend is free to you, but it must be activated. Push the button on the back to feel less isolated. Now, how fast would you press it? How much time would you spend? Would you wait? I'm asking for a friend who needs a friend. The choice seems easy, but sometimes the choice is heavy. You might like an instant friend, but Buster wasn't ready. So he didn't rush to push it. He kept on contemplating. What if this was all a trick and what if someone's waiting to jump out and yell, Gotcha, your friend here isn't real. What's this really costing me? This is too good of a deal. So the robot man collected dust because it was too dangerous and quite contently Buster was swimming in his loneliness. But deep down in his gut, he felt the rut of being shut in. He said, you know what? I think it's time to press the button. It was progress when he pressed and reassessed his situation And the first thing he addressed was a confession of frustration I'm kinda mad because I had a life I thought would suit me Would friendship really save me? Said the robot Absolutely You see it's costly not to be the boss of me I get it My control rules the world Some advice don't let it I'm here to cheer you up to join your club if you will share No matter what has got you stuck I always will be there Jesus makes me God's friend when I choose to follow him And when you choose to follow him a friendship truly will begin When Buster made a friend we won't say who the credit goes to But he made a friend simply in the end because he chose to. Jesus makes me God's friend when I choose to follow him. And when you choose to follow him, a friendship truly will begin. When I chose to make God the focus of my days, I saw my friendship with him grow in many different ways. So many times the things he does brings me to my knees. That reminds me of something. It's like the ABCs. First, you must admit you're a sinner who needs help. Second, you believe that Jesus sacrificed himself. Third, you make the choice to follow Jesus as your leader. And he becomes your friend. Your father. And your teacher. I'm glad we made these rhymes. Yeah, this was a great suggestion. Thanks for all your hard work, guys. I just have one more question. I couldn't find a rhyme for purple. Has anybody got one? How about purple? Not a word. Sure it is. I got one. That was like a bunch of nursery rhymes wrapped in an even bigger nursery rhyme. <laughs> there was so much to be learned about Jesus and Easter. And the first thing the Bible tells us is in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9. Say it like this. Romans 10, 9. Say with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Then you will be saved. Jesus died for our sins and by the power of God was raised back to life. And when you believe that in your heart and admit it to others, you are saved. One of my favorite things to read about in the Bible is about the life of Jesus. Jesus was born as a baby, lived a life showing God's love, then he died on the cross to take the punishment we deserve. He gave it all. But the story doesn't end there. Jesus came back to life three days later to restore our friendship with God. God loves us so much, he doesn't give us what we deserve. That's called grace. When we admit we are sinners, believe that Jesus rose again, and choose to make Jesus our number one leader, that's the ABCs. Easter is my favorite time of year to think about God's grace. God sent his son to earth, and Jesus died for us. Now we just need to choose to accept his grace. Jesus makes me God's friend when I choose to follow him, and I love being God's friend. Have a happy Easter, and I have one last rhyme for you guys. Connect HQ is here to help you. You can hear everything. It's Easter. You know I had to break out the bunny suit. It's tradition. But bunnies and eggs are not why I love this holiday. Easter is one of my favorite holidays because it's the day we celebrate all the things Jesus did when he came to earth. You know, if you've never decided to follow Jesus with your life, I would love to go over the ABCs again. A. Admit, admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying him. B, believe, believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. 
C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is the leader of your life and your number one friend. If you want to make that decision today, be sure to talk about it with your Connect Small Group leader before you leave. Hey kids, have you ever gotten in a fight with your parents? Maybe they told you that you couldn't go to your friend's house, so you got in a big argument with them. When you were fighting with them, did you feel like you weren't close to them anymore? Probably, but you made up and things felt right again. Well, that's kind of similar about what we're talking about today, salvation. So, what is salvation? Salvation is a fancy word for getting right with God. But wait, who said anything was wrong? Well, do you remember that thing called sin? Sin is doing bad things that hurt us and others. It's the opposite of what God wants, and it separates us from Him. And every person has a sin problem, so that's why we need to get right with God. So, how do we do it? We get saved when we believe in Jesus. It's that easy. Did you think you had to do something silly, like pay back for your sins or jump through hoops? Nope, there's nothing you have to do to work for salvation. It's a free gift when we put our trust in Jesus. Salvation is simple for us, but it wasn't so simple for Jesus. Jesus paid to save us when he died on the cross. You've probably heard that before, but that's the most important thing that's ever happened. Someone had to live a perfect life without sin. And then had to die on the cross to pay for all other sin. And that someone was Jesus. And he was the only one who could do it, because he is God. So he died and was buried in a tomb. But three days later, he rose again. Jesus bought our salvation by giving up his life. Thanks, Jesus! Anyone can make a personal decision to be saved. Believing in Jesus isn't a decision your parents, grandparents, or kids' church teachers can make for you. Memory verse! We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. So kids, if you want to put your faith in Jesus, talk to a parent or teacher about it. They'll help you understand how to follow Jesus.